from infinity. They came from eternity. These messengers from the light of the Great Spirit. Glooskap and Mausam, symbols of right and wrong, are coming to Earth to do the transcendental work of creation. The creation of the first Indian people, the Wabanaki. Glooskap, chief of good and of power, coming to earth to create. And Mausam, his twin with the head of a wolf, banished from the heavens for his misdeeds and forced to serve his brother. They had been designated by the Great Spirit to instill in the first men the notion of what is good and what is evil, so that they might choose. The lie of the land was perfect for the task at hand. It was a restful place, the ideal place for creation. But Malsum had taken another direction. Glooskap would soon feel the impact of destiny. Malsum! Mausam, his unwilling servant, blinded by ambition and jealousy, would inevitably sow dissension. Glooskap, guided by an unyielding force, immediately went to work. Until now, Earth had only known vegetation. Glooskap would find the matter which would serve to create the animals. Mausum had deliberately isolated himself, but while he felt unfit for this task, he followed closely the unfolding of the phenomena which would be produced. Glooskap's faith had only just revealed to him his powers. Communion with the Great Spirit had enabled him to find that which he sought, and peace settled deep within him. And, come nightfall, this new perception which came to him in the place of creation gave rise to a sudden vision of Malsum's evil intent. The ritual of purification and prayer would not only set him above his brother, but it would also protect him in his creative role. Marked by his origins, Mausum, the man with the head of a wolf, could only grow more aware of his powerless condition. 
Bukchinis kam was so happy. Kelusis wishes Kisalki, Wellali Nukchita, and tell me the Kapo Omuata. Wellali Nukchinis kam. O oh, great spirit, master of the heavens, help me. Help me to create the animal world. Help me to create the animal world so that soon it will live and help the Wabanaki people. The purity of the creator's actions contrasted with Malsum's jealous animal impulses. A jealousy that stemmed from his inability to ever create good things. Henceforth, nothing stood in the way of creation. From this clay would come the first creature, a perfect animal, the moose. Malsum would inevitably witness the work of good. O oh, great spirit, grant that the animal world and the world of the humans may live in mutual respect. You will be the moose. Go. The forest is yours. Respect your kind. Glooskap had spoken these words without joy. He was sad. For Malsum's ambition and jealousy forebode danger of sorts, an imbalance on earth. Regardless, nothing would stop him. The animals had now been created. You, with a long beak, you will be called Eagle. You, with the large ears, you will be known as Hare. And you, you will be called Bear. Malsum was dumbfounded, for his instincts discerned in these creatures part of his identity. You, the quick one with the red fur, you will be called Fox. And you will be known as Deer. You will be called Squirrel. Then he spoke to all of them, making them aware of their roles. Glooskap had revealed to them the names under which they would perpetuate their species. Now the time had come for him to create the first men. Oh, great spirit, guide my hand. Help me to create the Micmac people.
From the arrow's impact on the ash tree were born the Wabanaki people. They would give rise to the first Indian nations, the Mi'kmaq, the Penobscot, and the Passamaquoddy. Malsum did not possess the power of creation, and as he saw the results of his brother's work, an irresistible need for evil was born at the very root of his being. He would invoke all the evil forces which lived within him against one of Bluescap's creatures from the very moment of his conception. Glooscap, may the being you are creating be damned. I wish this creature to be vile and evil. I wish it to be wretched. Wretched! Wretched! Cap, I am the one who created this being. Well, so be it. It will be allowed to live, but it must live in peace with everyone. So that was it. The evil had just appeared. What would happen now? Lokes, Gesik Sudwi. In Nagisola, Mogulusca, in Gisodam of Dandel, Amic Sidus, Monagalu, Gluska, Chitkil, Esquiadis, Wisis, or Ada Wisis, Elni. You will be called Lox, and you will respond to my will. Know that Gluscap despises you. Go and follow my orders. To defend yourself against him, rally the animals to your cause. You, powerful bear, swallow a man whenever you can. You, fox, use your intelligence to outwit man. And you, swift moose, use your speed to run from man. Make him work for his food. But don't forget, Malsum is the one you must help. Alarmed by what they just heard, the animals decided to meet. They must take the initiative. Who knows, with a new master, their destiny might change. But what the animals did not know about their master, Glooscap, was his ability to hear and understand everything, regardless of distance. We have been betrayed by Glooscap. The humans will soon dominate us. Let's help Malsum fight Glooscap. Let's fight the humans. Let's avenge ourselves. Let's follow Malsum. Kill them. We will win. Kill them. Kill them. Glooscap was now forced to react.
he was forced to fight the storm. All of you, listen to what I have to say and listen well. I created each of you. Remember what I have told you. You have the same rights as the humans, so live in peace with them. Do you think I'm not aware of what is happening? No one can keep anything from me. Someone has led you astray. So be careful what you do. You want to be the strongest. If you threaten the humans, then they will have the power to dominate you. Remember who is the leader. And if, and you, if persist, you persist, you will you get, what, get you what you deserve. Malsum had been punished. Gluskap had banished him from the village. For this creature, who was half wolf, half man, had just betrayed himself by his behavior. And now he was forced to live in his lair like a wolf. But a wolf with a thirst for vengeance against his brother, Gluskap. About Nabdadisna, Dandil Lalish Gluska, Mona del Gaia Nuna, About Nabname, About Nabdadisna, Dandil Lalish Gluska, Mona del Gaia Nuna, About Nabname, Glooskap thanked the Great Spirit for the work he had done. Fortunately, Malsum didn't know he could have killed me by simply planting the root of a reed in my heel. I thank you, O oh Great Spirit. But Lox, who had been there, had overheard Glooskap's secret. He would use this to his own advantage. He would warn Malsum. But when he reached him, he also witnessed Malsum's prayer. O great spirit, Glooskap thinks he is better than I am. But one day, I will be the great chief. Because he does not know that the root of a fern planted in my neck could kill me. Lox then changed his mind. He would first find Glooskap. Oh, great master, I know Malsum's weakness. Master, if you give me wings to fly like the birds in the sky, then, then I will tell you everything. A root. If you plant the root of a fern in his neck, he will die. But the traitor could not stand Glooskap's penetrating look. And so Lox changed his mind again and went to Malsum. Lox told him Glooskap's secret. Well, what about my wings? My wings, will you give them to me? Go away, vile creature. You make me ill. Malsum had made up his mind. Now, to become chief, he must kill Glooskap.
the irreparable had happened. Two opposing powers would collide once and for all. Incarnate evil against incarnate good. Henceforth, one of them would rule and decide the destiny of the world of the humans and the world of the animals. Mausum's jealousy and greed. Glooskap's honesty and reason. A fratricide would be committed. Glooskap was made aware of destiny's devastating fatality. He must now act quickly, for the evil which Malsum had sown had begun to spread. Glooskap spoke to the men he had created. <laughs> Akistelim kepenik dan plata atok sep. Nikai teli mula, ni pati kenau munak cut papuan. Kesitan mana mima cuinu? The animals have decided that they will no longer live in peace with you. Henceforth, you will have to defend yourselves against them. I will teach you to use weapons, but I warn you: never kill for pleasure. Respect all forms of life. If you kill too many animals, you will be haunted by the monster famine, and it will chase you until death. <laughs> and after making these recommendations, Glooskap left his people, stopping at the place where he'd first arrived on Earth. There, he thought about everything that had happened. And about everything that would henceforth happen in this world, since evil, antagonism of good, was now here. <laughs> <laughs> 